Hello, this is Mr. Waitman. This is part three of the series of stoichiometry videos, this one entitled mass to mass problems. This is one of the more common types of problems that you'll encounter with your early you know, use of stoichiometry. And we will once again be using in my video the strategy or graphic organizer of up, over, and down. This is just a way to keep track of where you're starting, what substance you have, what the molar ratio is, and then making sure that you're coming out at the required substance. Though an overused slogan right now, keep calm, uh, keep calm and convert to moles makes a lot of sense because almost all the problems you'll be doing in chemistry require you to convert to moles. Now if you've forgotten how to convert to moles, you'll want to refer back to your notes and or one of my earlier videos on the subject. Let's start with a problem. We want to determine how many grams of iron are formed, that is, are a product, when 77.18 grams of iron oxide are reacted with hydrogen. So let's go ahead and put together a chemical equation. There's our iron oxide and our hydrogen producing iron and water. Now we have to balance that chemical equation. This is always our first step. So when all else fails, convert to moles, but if you don't have a balanced chemical equation, you'll never have a proper ratio. So let's start with balancing. So there it is in a balanced form. Now if we take what we know from the problem, we know that we have 77.18 grams of iron oxide. Now if the problem doesn't specifically say it, it is implied that you have sufficient amount of the other substance. So in this case, there was no mention of a quantity of hydrogen, so we work on the assumption that we have an excess of hydrogen available. As previously mentioned, we now need to convert to moles. The balanced chemical equation gives you a molar relationship. It does not give you a mass relationship. While you're, com while you're in the unit of grams, you'd be comparing apples and oranges. You need a comparable unit to apply in the world of chemistry, and that unit is a mole. So we need to convert our 77.18 grams of iron oxide into moles. You'll recall from our earlier studies that N, or the number of moles, is equal to the mass divided by the molar mass. So we need to know the molar mass of iron oxide. Iron oxide is made up of three iron atoms and four oxygen atoms. So three times 55 decimal zero or decimal eight five grams per mole would give us 167 decimal five five. And similarly, four oxygens would have a mass of 64 grams per mole. So our final measurement is, or our final molar mass is 231 decimal five five grams per mole. So now we can plug that into our formula. We already knew the 77.18 grams of the iron oxide and we divide it by its molar mass. This gives us a grand total of 0 0.333 moles of the iron oxide. So now let's make use of our up, over, and down. So here we are back at our iron oxide and we're going to go up with our decimal 333 moles. And you'll recall from the earlier video that we divide by where we're coming from. So in this case, we're coming from the iron oxide. So we are going to go over to the iron and down. We must first divide by our one mole of iron oxide, and then we would multiply by our three moles of iron. So again, those coefficients that we're making reference to, this number one here was implied in front of that, FeO3, Fe3O3, Oh, 04, I apologize. And my 3 came from the coefficient found there. If I did the math, I plugged it in, it came out to be 0 0.999 moles of iron, which I'm quite comfortable rounding to 1 mole of iron. You have a practice problem worksheet that you can now take a stab at, and I look forward to discussing this more with you after.